previsti da testa. Non funziona, non funziona. Che è la cosa di metallo? Sì. Sì, così magari stai facendo... Lo lasci là. Questo lo lasci su. Is the, is this line, correct? Oh, you, yeah, you check. Yeah, you go there. No, let's... Uh, uh, just go back. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, Is it? it should be live already. Hmm. Steve, you to show live? Steve, you should live? Yeah, Speak easy live. Speak easy live. Uh, <laughs> Correct, live. Yeah. <laughs> <lacht> Alright, hallo, guten Tag, herzlich willkommen äh, zu, dem, zu der großen Masterclass von äh, Aro Peroni aus dem Comic Park und äh, sein Partner, der mitgebracht hat, Paulo Scialki. Äh, ich freue mich natürlich sehr, dass Sie hier sind. I'm just going to do an introduction in German and then I'll switch to English. Okay. You translate um, the nice one in English. Exactly. <lacht> <lacht> äh, es freut mich unglaublich, dass so viele Leute mal wieder in die Bahn Wasser den Weg gefunden haben, um hier dabei zu sein. Ähm, ich freue mich natürlich auch, dass Leute aus ganz weit her, Deutschland, Österreich auch da sind, ähm, die extra hier hineingefahren, geflogen, was auch immer. Ähm, und das freut mich natürlich sehr, sehr, eben äh, Agro heute hier zu haben. Wie ihr alle wisst, äh, wurde ja Agro mit der Common Bar und seinem Team zur Weltbesten Bar geführt, von World's Gift die Best, Top 500, Number One und eine unglaublich tolle, schöne Bar. Ähm, und äh, ich möchte mich auch ganz herzlich bei Andy und ihr Leo bedanken für die Unterstützung. Ohne euch wäre das alles nicht möglich gewesen. So, ganz großes Dankeschön. Dann auch danke an mein Team, die alle dabei gewesen sind, alles vorzubereiten. Äh, die Jungs hinten, wo euch mit Drinks versorgen werden. Und ähm, ja, ich will nicht zu lange in den heißen Brei reden. Ich möchte eigentlich gleich die Info weitergeben. So we're going to switch to English. The Masterclass is in English. Because we've got an international crowd. Watching through YouTube. Um, so, Ago, Paolo, thank you very much for, for coming and, and for uh, spending time with us. Um, I'm going to give the microphone to you and then have a wonderful presentation. If you have questions, please put up your hand. Um, Ago will answer to nearly every question. Nearly. Nearly. Depends uh, what <laughs> is the question. Exactly. Eh? All right. So, uh, no, have fun. Sure. And um, if you want to have a picture with Ago afterwards, no problem. Um, he has a few minutes before he has a small interview quickly uh, after that, so don't hesitate, everybody can take a picture with him. It's just five minutes for a picture. Uh, I'm joking. <laughs> Cash only. Cash only. <laughs> All right, so have fun. I'll go. Your, your, your Grazie. Is the microphone working now? No. No? We use this one? Are these for the live? Or? Just for the live, yeah. Ah, okay, so we, it's very light microphone. Mm -hmm. Buon pomeriggio everyone, grazie Dirk and grazie the team, the bar ambassador to welcome us so greatly yesterday and to make us experience uh, how cold is the ice here, because we had many martinis and uh, I have to say <laughs> the cold therapy always helps the day after. Thank you Vanessa for uh, being my partner in crime yesterday. <laughs> Very much. Um, thank you for joining us, uh, for us it's always a pleasure to travel. Uh, and share uh, our uh, journey that started over a decade ago, even though I still look very young and have a, I got a few years of experience. 
But more than uh, share our journey, we are very much uh, pleased every time when we go and visit the new places and we see old friends and we're gonna create the new friends as well. And very much we want to be inspired by the local communities because in our life as a bartender who work in hospitality, inspiration is uh, from everywhere. It's uh, coming from all around us. So as much uh, as uh, we want to surprise our guests uh, with uh, amazing stories, amazing ingredients, uh, something exotic, we need to make sure that those stories, they are part of us. So we can translate them in a nice uh, liquid history, which is the cocktail. I'm very glad to be um, partnered with uh, Paolo today. So Paolo is uh, one of our- Good afternoon, uh, everyone. One of our youngest uh, team member. He just turned uh, 25. And when I was 25, uh, I was barely um, thinking to work in uh, at the, this uh, high level of the industry. So it's very much ahead. He started with us four years ago as a young barbec coming from Italy. He had a little experience in London, but then he wanted to challenge himself. And uh, is there really the representation of the corner bar ethic? So he doesn't talk too much at work, only the right time, because uh, he likes to observe, understand, so then he can give a contribution to the life of the corner bar. And uh, well, today will be, today, tomorrow, we'll be promoted as a supervisor. That's why we changed the, the job description from a junior bartender to supervisor. So he's also helping on the floor in order to make sure that uh, what is the thinking process, the preparation process behind the bar always goes uh, very efficiently on the floor. Very emotional, Paul. Every time we speak in public, <laughs> I'm always silent. I'm you always silent. You want to say something, Paul? I'm so glad to have you he to be here and uh, thank you very much for the hospitality of yesterday and I'm uh, really looking forward to explain to you our philo philosophy of the bar and to share some uh, how we say martini love with you. Fantastic. Any question? No? All good? You're very quiet guys, you're very quiet. <laughs> Is it standard Monday quiet or? Uh... <laughs> we should, we should need to warm oh, it up. <laughs> Lesson number one, always check the clipper before starting a presentation. Usually works. Oh, I call it. <laughs> uh, 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 too fast, too fast, too fast. No, it's my fault, Dirk. I'm very clumsy with technology. Okay, Conno Bar. What is the Conno Bar? It's uh, is a place that uh, for me is magical. It's not only a workplace, but it's a life experience. It's a life lesson. When uh, we opened 13 years ago, there was, uh, there was no, like, uh, nowadays, many other bars uh, which have uh, this amazing cocktail culture and, uh, uh, and uh, innovative approach into, into looking after a guest. There was a big distinction between independent bar, where uh, I'm from, and where we could be inspired by many things, you know, by going to the market, by, chefing, by chef techniques. And this is where to experiment it was get what you need to get, go to the bar, make something. And then there were uh, the hotel bars, very classic, elegant, attention to details. And perhaps because of the structure of work and because of the clientele, the cocktail aspect had never been very much innovative. So in 2008, when uh, we reopened the Connot and we opened the Connot bar, the idea, the vision, not our vision, but the vision of the owner, Paddy McKillan, it was to create something that could really change uh, the game in, uh, in hospitality. As I said, I want to have uh, a cocktail bar, a modern cocktail bar, but still honoring the tradition of uh, your profession, so our profession, and the tradition of the Connaught Hotel. So we had to create this link between uh, tradition meets innovation. And it wasn't easy because uh, we knew that the Connaught is a big establishment with the clientele they visit uh, for a generation. And since generation, they have their own uh, way to be looked after, their own special serve and special cocktail. So we had to, to be able to honor this aspect, but also you know, tease them a little bit, make them curious, and open up for uh, the future. And as well embrace a new generation. 2008 was the era of uh, the first uh, iPhone, when social media really started to explode. So also we consider this aspect of it. 
But what we want you always to be uh, focused and never be distracted from in the beginning, as uh, still is now, is uh, the focus on our guest experience. So the, the spotlight is on them, is not on us. Every time we create something, which is a, a serve, a cocktail, a way out to upsell a champagne, whatever it is, is to make them feel even better. So it's not what we know, but it's uh, how we make them feel. And now, I mean, Cardinal Bar is known for cocktails, right? And uh, everywhere you go now, you have a fantastic laboratory where you can experiment. You have R&D shift, you know, this kind of stuff. By the time we didn't have a laboratory, we even didn't have a bar. I went to set up the menu in one month. So it was uh, June, June 30th, I signed the contract. I started to work the day after. And we had the one month of July to create a menu. It was probably the hottest summer in London, since I'm in London 19 years. And because the hotel was going through a refurbishment, there were no air, con air condition. And a little room, probably big like Super this space sure. here, a butler room. So I had to negotiate right away with a, black, with a butler manager. It was my first lesson how to be soft when you negotiate. Um, and so the room had the sink, had the light. No window. So you imagine in summer, you're closed inside all day, and you try to find inspiration. But I needed something to, to store uh, the, the, all the experiments. So we managed to get a, a tall fridge inside, which was my best friend, because fridge gave me refreshment. But at the same time, you know, fridge produced heat. So every morning when I was working the room, the room was double hot, even hotter than usual. So I said, wow, what a nice uh, creative approach we need to have here to, to make this cocktail menu and the first drink that we created actually was uh, the bloody mary it's the same bloody mary that uh, you receive now the welcome drink is one of the aspects that always we add and we want to have uh, perhaps we inspire many other bars to to implement in their uh, in their uh, guest experience it's a welcome drink that reflects the i need really to stay still because Otherwise, there is too much noise. I'm trying to find the spot <laughs> that it doesn't do. Okay, there we go. So, uh, welcome drink is something that we implemented because um, we want to reflect the fine uh, dining experience. Therefore, we call it fine drinking experience. You go to a fine dining restaurant, you have the Ames Bush, which is a chef choice. Can go with season, can go with a new experiment that uh, uh, we are working on can be a way to try new recipes and test them on the guests and see how they like it. It can be a way to, as well, get our junior team inspired because we leave them in charge to make the recipe for the welcome drink under our guidance, of course. But it's a way how they keep, uh, we keep them motivated right away. Then there is the, the whole experience of, uh, of uh, the corner bar through the cocktail, the service, the nice manners, the Italian accent. We are all Italian. 15, no, 15, oh, an 15, exception. one exception. Uh, Milica, she's from Slovakia, but she's fluent in Italian. So <laughs> we, could man we could manage to, to communicate nicely. And then in the end, we create this uh, little uh, memory for our guest, something tangible. That uh, it was a little bit of contrast because in the digital world every, everything is uh, is live as today, which is amazing. Everything is uh, shared right away from the other side of the world, and you can uh, see what's happening, but you can feel what's happening. For us, the feeling is very important. You know, I'm very I'm very romantic on that, and I photography lover as well. And then my generation, there was no digital photography; everything was printed. And uh, for me, the best when I go back home in Lake Como and I have my box of uh, photography and I pick it up and when I touch the photo, you know, you touch the photo, you see the photo or, or even a postcard from uh, your travel or from your friend's travel, even a postcard, something tangible, the tactile uh, sense brings you back to the moment. Because maybe you don't remember exactly how was the drink 
who was uh, looking after you, the name of the waiter or the bartender or the waitress. But for sure, there is something that you remember, which is how you felt. And this uh, cocktail card actually was, uh, was something that uh, we started from the beginning because we wanted to create this uh, long last uh, relationship with, uh, with the people that visit the condo bar. So there is uh, the recipe or the drinks that uh, you enjoy from the menu. So can uh, work as uh, inspiration for you, for the guests. Try to make it at home. But nowadays, you know, the preps they are quite complex, so there is no all the details in that. Can be a way to remember how many drinks you had and why the credit card uh, bill is so high. <laughs> a way to remember where have you been as well, because sometimes, you know, it's very important to have a clear uh, uh, excuse to tell uh, to your boss or to your uh, partner when you go back home the day after. And this cocktail car is still uh, active as it is now. It's so simple, but so effective. I'll tell you a little story. Uh, this is a friend of mine who lives in Edinburgh. There is a famous bar uh, in Edinburgh, um, which uh, the name doesn't come in my mind now, but we'll do shortly. <laughs> anyway, he was at the bar, talking to the bartender. They have quite a long bar, like a few meters. And at the end of the bar, there was a guest with a piece of paper waving to the bartender. What we do when someone calls us with a piece of paper or like that, with a smile, you have a fire inside, no? <laughs> you, you, you say, I'm gonna go there now, and, uh, I'm gonna go for it. So the bartender went to this gentleman, and he said, yes, how can I help you? <laughs> and the, 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 um, the guest said, you know, I guess if you can uh, recreate this lovely cocktail, because I was in the corner bar the other day, and I really love this drink, and I did because it was my anniversary, and I like every now and then to recall this memory. So I wonder if you can make it for me. So for me, we reconnect even more to the history and the heritage of our work and how a little bit uh, the classic cocktail became famous. You know? It's a word of mouth. People traveling the world, asking for the same drinks, and uh, slowly, slowly, they became classic. So for us, the human connection, the human interaction is uh, more important than uh, what people uh, see from the outside. So this is a little bit in a nutshell uh, what we do at the corner bar. <coughs> Did I forget anything, Paulina? No, at the moment. No? Can I get some water? Yes. 100% uh, water, no. Swiss water. No, 60% water and 40. <laughs> Any water? Something Any water? else? Still? Still. This, uh, how many of you have been in the corner bar? Hey, quite a good percentage. Good, good, good. Hope you enjoyed, first of all, yeah? Otherwise, uh, you can give me the feedback later, not in front of everyone, please. <laughs> this is a little bit of the corner bar atmosphere. It's, uh, it's an amazing design. Uh, the designer was uh, David Collins. He's uh, well known to have uh, opened many bars and restaurants in London. But it's also well known to because he was uh, one of the best friends of uh, Madonna. He, he designed her home. And talking about Madonna. Do you want to she, share the story of Madonna? Yeah, I Maybe. think so. Yeah. So first of all, she asked, was, for a, she asked for a martini. It was his previous girlfriend. <laughs> no, she asked for a martini. Okay, she was sitting here, this table here, where this uh, gentleman is with uh, David Collins himself. She asked for a martini. And our question was, now she's for a dirty martini. And our question was, how dirty do you like it? <laughs> like Paris Hilton? She laughed as well. But then <laughs> we proposed the Cono Martini, uh, which we're gonna go through in a moment. The Cono Martini experience is uh, something that really changed our life because um, it came another life lesson. When you believe in something, when you really believe it, there is no obst obstacle in front of you. Sometimes it's yourself that you make it happen. Sometimes it's not yourself that you make it happen, but things are happening. And uh, it's good as well. We always don't need to be the protagonist. So we were literally praying the GM to get rid of the carpet that was in the middle here. So now you see a beautiful marble. It's not really clear, but yeah. It's a beautiful marble. 
in the middle like a catwalk. So as soon as you walk into the corner bar, there's the door, you turn on the right, and this is the scene that you see. You have a um, section here and a middle section and the front section. So you already projected it towards the bar. So the bar becomes already the protagonist as soon as you walk in. And you see the bartender, you know, mixing the drink and talking to people. But before it wasn't like that. It was all carpet with a, with a texture as it is on the side. And the trolley is, is a heavy trolley that we have, very similar to this one. And can you imagine going the carpet already is, uh, is quite uh, difficult, but the carpet has the part, pattern. So literally we needed two of us to gently lift the trolley and go between the section to the other one. And inside we had as well a bottle and glasses. So can you imagine when you go in the park and all the bottle bangs and uh, it, it wasn't pleasant. So we were trying to speak with uh, Anthony Lee, the GM and said, Mr. Lee, look, it's a struggle, it's ruined the experience. Uh, it really is not a service because you always need the two people to do the old, uh, the old tricks and stuff. I say, guys, the uh, request is crossed because once you have a, a contract with a designer, you're done. There is nothing you can, you can do, you can change yourself. But that day, the request for the dirty martini, it was enlightening for us. Because what's happened on the Monday, it was a Saturday night, and we were open seven days. On the Monday, we received an email, like forward. Um, from the designer. From the designer, yeah. David Collins, Martin Experience. We were like, oops. Guys, the dream is gone. Maybe she didn't like the joke of the Dirty Martini. Maybe something <laughs> went wrong. And I said, no, really, we went uh, pale. We were really drying the mouth as well. So we went through the email and they be calling and say, you know, Saturday night I was, uh, dear Mr. Lee, I hope you're well, za, 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 za. Saturday night I was at the corner bar. Service is amazing as usual. It's the, my favorite bar that I design. That's why I take all my best friend there. But the Martini experience, as soon as the, the sentence started, but the Martini experience, I work out. I say, guys, okay. I, I take the stuff from the locker and we go. But the Martini experience, it was amazing. But the carpet in the middle, it doesn't make it work because it ruined all the flow. So next Sunday, we're going to close and we're going to replace the carpet with the marble. So I said, wow, it was like, uh, oh, yeah. Thank you, Madonna. <laughs> Thank you, Madonna. Let's say, you know? <laughs> so this is another life lesson that uh, I learned at the Conno Bar. If you believe in something, just keep on doing it. And then uh, you know, if it needs to happen, happen. If it doesn't happen, maybe happen tomorrow. So keep on striving for your dream, guys. Never stop. And uh, if may I add something to this, the trolley together with the cocktail card allow us to implement even more the human touch that we give to the guest experience because it's the only way that a, uh, a bartender goes to the table, goes to find the guest around the bar and not the guest going to the bar and asking for the drink. So it's a really nice moment for us to interact with the guests, doing them drinks and ask how was their day, if they like the bar and everything. So it really, really reinforce our message of the bespoke experience that we do for our guests. The Econo Bar is a little bit timeless. You will lose the sense of time once you walk inside. Like today, I lost the sense of time. We are late already. So I don't know if you have any commitments later. Supposed to be here one hour, but it's already half an hour away and uh, we are not even started. So are you okay if you go along a little bit? See? Thank you. Yeah. Fine. I think we can start with the... Che stile, ragazzi, infinito. <laughs> che stile infinito. We show you a little video of uh, what, uh, how is the Martini experience happening at the corner bar, just to see how it is uh, all around. Uh, and that's why we're, we're going to make one, uh, one for you here. We do the explanation in this as we do for our guests. <coughs> Thank 
facciamo uno e due, eh? mm? facciamo uno e due. Sì, ma non vuoi fare due? Sì, vuoi fare il tandem? Il tandem è sincronizzato o posso fare anche il tandem due mattini? Se vuoi, tanto ci vuole due grassi. Ah, grazie. Eh? So you having in front of you uh, Econo Martini made with uh, tank number 10. Thank you for sponsoring today. And also tank 10 is our uh, best friend for uh, the Martini trolley. So after 10 years for the 10th anniversary, we made a Martini trolley version 2. It has a lovely the one zero in front of here. The people ask what is. You know, 10 Downing Street is the Prime Minister residence. We say, you know, we are the Prime Minister for Martini. So the government gave us the number 10. So tanker number 10, um, vermouth blend, dry vermouth blend. We do a blend of vermouth because uh, we allow the final liquid to have a full bouquet of aroma. They nicely match all the style of gin and vodka and other spirits if they need another spirit. Because sometimes, you know, the combination of the right gene with the right uh, vermouth is very essential. If they don't uh, link to each other, the martini does have the texture, the flavor, and the long lasting uh, aromas on the palate. This is the reason. The reason number two, we wanted to speed up a little bit the you know, interaction with the guests and not say too much yeah. to talk about the vermouth as such, but we wanted to highlight uh, the spirit aspect because, as well, give us opportunity to upsell from normal uh, gin and vodka to new vodka, gin on the market, or more, more expensive as well. So we create this uh, vermouth blend. Our martini is uh, in proportion of uh, five to one. Five to one. Means five parts of spirits and one of vermouth. So the Italian touch is there, which is the vermouth, and give a uh, herbaceousness and uh, aromas. We're gonna make two actually. Okay. And for the vermouth blend, we wanted to create something to be uh, pleasant for every guest. We, who does like dry martini, who does more like wet, more sweeter. So what we created was a blend of dry, extra dry and sweet vermouth. So with all this blend, it allows us to give complexity to the drink. Okay. You want to talk about the bitters? Sure. Okay. Uh, then we have a selection of uh, aromatic bitters. Not okay size. No, they are tinctured bitter, as we know. But they are not, they are not aromatic bitters. They are not complex uh, um, flavor. They are actually one fragrance. It is uh, the Martini experience was a uh, total design uh, as well in the uh, little uh, room on the fourth floor during uh, the summer. Uh, in 2008. And uh, after 13 years, still the Bloody Mary and uh, the Martini, they are still with us. They're actually our signature cocktail. The bitter, they are designed for uh, many reasons. Well, we talk a lot about flavor fragrances, so they can work as a flavor enhancer. So specific aroma can enhance certain botanicals of the gin. So you can use the same gin for different occasions, you know, for aperitive, digestive, uh, refreshing relaxing, energizing, and uh, but at the same time, we don't want to approach every single guest with the technicality of the cocktail, otherwise uh, we might lose uh, their attention right away because uh, they are no cocktail connoisseur, because uh, they had a long day, they just want to have a drink. So very much like uh, over 20 years ago when I started to work, we ask uh, how they're feeling, you know, what they're looking for. So we, as Paolo said, we create really this uh, connection with them. We make them feel at ease. They feel comfortable. All the senses, they are uh, really enhanced. We have uh, five uh, uh, flavors on the trolley. We brought uh, three today, which are the, the signature one. And also, we're going to have them this evening for those that uh, are going to join this evening. So we have in the glass is uh, Dr. Ago. I don't need to explain why the name, right? It's a blend of uh, ginseng and bergamot. So ginseng is uh, very much like a gentian 
no licorice gentle like alpine flavor which i really like it it also is energizing so if you had uh, a day and you still need to go ahead ginseng what we recommend and then the bergamot bergamot is, uh, is is the italian flavor per excellence but also there is a connection with the britishness uh, because uh, bergamot is the signature aroma in all great tea right so since brexit I tell all the English that we have an embargo bergamot from Italy to UK, so they cannot make any more bergamot. <laughs> cannot make any more uh, old gray tea. So the... as the as the European Cup, as the Olympic game, everything, the Italian will win again. Um, the other one are for uh, this evening black cardamom. It's a blend of a green cardamom and black cardamom. Green cardamom, you know, is balsamic, it's fresh, it's aromatic, and uh, dry. The black cardamom is a smoked uh, cardamom, uh, per se. A little more you know? Yep. So we like the smoky aroma, but also as a fantastic minty note, and uh, licorice. So it means uh, woodiness, uh, freshness, so it really stay here. Actually, it's a blend of the two. Originally, we had the, the green cardamom only, and then I, we start to work on the black cardamom. But the black cardamom was too intense. And during lockdown, I don't know what the guys did in the back, the barbex, they blended the two. So we're going to the trolley. I was offering the green cardamom essence. And we're giving to smell to the guests. And they were saying, ah, oh, it's smoky. One, second one, third one. And then I pick up the bottle, it was a smoky. I say, guys, what you did? You blend the two by mistake. Of course, when you ask, uh, you made it by mistake, and nobody did nothing, as always. <laughs> you always need to check the camera who did what, because they're a little bit scared of me. I don't know why. But anyway, by mistake, we create these new blends, which uh, the guests really love it. So ask her to keep making mistakes, because sometimes with a mistake, you can find uh, a better results. And then we have uh, tonka. You know tonka beans? Yeah, tonka is uh, vanilla -y. It's uh, very silky as well. I love the earthy aftertaste. We infuse it together with the apricot kernel, which is almondy, right? Like amaretto. Vanilla and almond together is very much like a flavor of a marzipan. So this bitter gives an amazing and sweet sensation on the nose and fantastic silky texture on the palate. They coat the palate with this... Uh, uh, velvety aroma and allow the gin to explode in all the freshness but then the aftertaste is dry shall we shall we okay so paul uh mix the aludo torago yes. maybe maybe we do one cardamom and one tonka so we pass it around and you can try the sure. other two the way as we do now is the, as we do with the guests every single time what we created during pandemic is this little uh, flavor map because we cannot anymore give to the guests the, the, the bottle to smell. But we create this little uh, flavor map where we put a couple of drops of each of the bitter. Keep passing it down. And then they can smell it. And then this again, like the, the cocktail card, it became a, right away the first day, the 17th of September 2020, when we reopened. It became a, an amazing memory because we open at 4 o'clock, at 4.15, the bar was full of our regular martini drinker. Mm -hmm. And for them, was, you know, was, uh, they were craving to come back to the bar to have a martini. Yeah, so they say, Ago, Ago, Paolo, Giorgio, Maura, to all the team, can you please uh, sign us the, the card? Because we want to keep as a memory of the coming back after the lockdown. So it became right away something that uh, has a little bit of romance. And uh, as well, we describe it as a... Uh, uh, art piece of uh, your marketing experience because every piece of paper will have a different shade, a different way how the liquid interact with the card. Lemon. So we have uh, one uh, uh, yeah. tonka and one cardamom. cardamom. Two milliliters of bitters. It seems a lot, however, the bitter they are done in a perfect balance that uh, they give uh, aromatics and aftertaste, but they don't affect the, the taste. So it's not a flavor of martini, it's a, a aromatized martini. I feel like we need to do bungee jumping. Everybody's getting ready for it. That's why we went upstairs before we were trying something, but we were both. 
see that shit here from last night. <laughs> yeah, mom. Vamos. And that's how we pull. Everything we do at Econo Bar is a combination of uh, technicality. So the ingredients that we use, how we transform them. And as well, there is uh, the other side is the theatrical aspect. So how we do things. That's why we say, does it matter what you do? Does it matter what you do, but how you do it? We want the theatrical aspect to be pleasant, not to be arrogant at all, but to be soft and pleasant that almost uh, you don't need to explain the technicality of it. Again, to go back to what I said before, is about you that you visit the bar. It's not about us that we made uh, the best drink because we are, uh, we are genius. I think I need a sip. I need to get an approval for this martini, sorry guys. <laughs> and I think what is important cabinet. about our martini oh, and the uh, relation with the bitter is also that we don't mix it directly with the mixing glass, but we just rinse the glass to just add an extra layer of flavor, but to not overpowering and affect the taste of your martini. And uh, if you see the glass, if you pass around, not the liquid, but just the uh, glass itself, you will see some pattern. It's basically these glasses are just bespoke for us from a glass designer called John Jenkins. And the designer you will see calls back some elements of the bar because the arch you can see on top, there are the arches of some lights on top and the line are the line of the arches. So it's really an embracing of all the atmosphere that we have at the bar. Yeah. Everything that we do is, uh, is um, a meticulous uh, uh, process to look after uh, every single detail. And we want the details not to be visible. So you don't notice it unless we're going to indicate it to you. And then you say, ah, it connects. And we believe that many details put together, they create this uh, magical experience that uh, sometimes you cannot describe by words, but you need to experience yourself uh, and have the memory of. So this thing here. So every time we go to the table, we give the tasting of the five bitters. We have this uh, interaction and we realize which kind of people are you, what you're looking for. Also, if you are a regular guest that you come every day for a martini, you can have a different martini every day because of the bitters, because of the garnish, the different spirits, and so on and so forth. Any questions? Comment? Of course, we use a slow frozen ice. Perfect balance between dilution, temperature, and texture. Texture is something that uh, is a box that we need to tick every time. Because texture is uh, this, uh, the sensation on the palate, this uh, velvety sensation that allow the flavor to stick on the palate and stay for long. And once the flavor is stay on the palate for long, you have uh, a longer aftertaste. And when the aftertaste is long, the flavor, they keep developing. So you want to go back to the drink because every time you discover new aromas. As well, we try to create drinks that have recognizable aromas, so they make you feel uh, comfortable per se, but also there's something that uh, you, you don't know or you cannot describe it, but you think that you know. So you cannot put a finger on it. So you want to go back every time because it makes you curious. Hospitality is a gesture of love, guys. Towards our guests, of course, but has to be genuine. You know, I see in my travel, I see, I mean, I didn't want to go to work in hotel bars when they call me because, uh, well, I had a long beard and piercing. I had a one, two, three, four, believe it or not. Uh, working with uh, yellow braces and, uh, and a black shirt. So when they call me, I go, you want to join this uh, project? I say, <laughs> you drunk. You look at me, <laughs> you crazy. But also, I was uh, I was hearing all the uh, all the complaint from uh, uh, bartenders, especially Italians. They complain a lot. They were working hotel bars. They say no because of this one. It's no creativity. They cannot buy this one, that uh, blah 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 blah. It was all about uh, barrier in front of them. So if you are upset. As much as you want to leave your problem outside the door, 
you need to find the, the way to do it and uh, your manager to help as well. That's why we have always a Metzcal ready. And um, if you are upset inside, when you look after the guest, it cannot be genuine. You know, your smile is fake. So you are not happy and, and the people feel it. So that's why we try to create a, a dynamic between the Connor Bar team members that uh, it became a family where all we support each other. We do, we did, we do a lot of training about you know, how to communicate, how to do silent communication, so how to trust each other, how to stand in front of the guest, how to talk, how to move. They're all uh, aspects of work that uh, the guys, uh, I did as well, you take home. Because if you improve yourself, if you improve a personal aspect of yourself for work purposes, you can take it as well in your daily life. So when you go to the post office in Italy, there is the old lady always complaining, can, doesn't want to be helpful. After one year at Conno Bar, you can twist the situation around. Is she gonna help you? Is she gonna thank you to make her day a better day? We have our passion, they come in, in, into, into our life. So, uh, well, Giorgio is a passionate of, uh, of volleyball. In volleyball, you know, you really very much you need to trust uh, the rest of the team. Every individual have uh, their own role. It's like, uh, if the ball goes down, game is finished. It's like, uh, we like to describe if, uh, if the drink doesn't go to the table at the right time, the guest is not happy, the drink is not right. It's uh, all the consequences. So it's really like a blindfolded, a silent communication way to work that uh, you need to be able to, to, to create in your bar. But as well, before they look after other people, you need to look after yourself. So I like martial arts. I can break marble with my hands. I'll show you later. <laughs> but I like martial arts because it's very much introspective. No? You need to work on yourself a lot. And once, once you feel better, you're happier, you're a better person, and you can uh, give inspiration to the team members around you. So that's how we like to describe it, is a sense of uh, dynamic, uh, effortless uh, um, communication. Way, communication. Hey, Paulino, I started it with other people that also inspired me. And then, uh, thankfully, we always find people that are, uh, you know, that are uh, embracing the concept. After generation goes every five, Three, six years, four, yeah, pretty much. So Giorgio and Maura started with me seven years ago. Casual contracts means paid by hour, so no, no forty hours a week are guaranteed. And uh, so if you need someone, you call. If you don't need, you don't call. But they wanted to do anyway, even though they came to London. And London is expensive. And they embrace the concept right away. No, they don't even embrace it, but they also start to give contribution. To the point that uh, now Maura is a deputy bar manager, will be bar manager soon, and George is a head mixologist. But also what they did, they, they did what I, what I shared with them. So it became a cascade actor, where uh, they all look after each other. And when there is a new starter arriving, it's not me, or Giorgio, Mauro, Paolo, training them is actually is uh, consequential. The next in line, the junior barbecue we teach the new arrival. In this way, we call we all have time uh, to improve ourselves uh, on skills that we need to improve, and then we can give it back. It's all a cycle. Any question? No. Give us some more water. Yep. And uh, embracing and reinforcing the Agos message, what we're going to show you to you now is really the example of how a team could work together from any position, from the bottom till the top. That's why this drink is really the um, encapsulation of this message, because it was one of the first drink where the Connacht Bar team together create uh, a symphony of flavor in one glass. And uh, do you want to add something or yeah. do you want to start with the recipe? Do you want me to do the it? The drink is, uh, let me start to put the, the ice and everything. 
The drink uh, is called uh, uh, Goodfellas. No, I like the movie. I like because we're like a little bit Goodfellas. No, Italian mafia. No, a joke. The drink is, a, is an inspiration of a uh, uh, forgotten classic. Never been a classic, never been famous, but the name is a Fanciulli cocktail. A fanciulli translated it like a little uh, naughty boy, good fellas. Uh, if I'm not wrong, uh, someone knows the answer better, please uh, help. 1930 circa, World for a Story book, uh, essentially uh, Manhattan with uh, Ferne Branca, shaken Manhattan with Ferne Branca. Whiskey, sweet vermouth, Fernet, shake it, probably American way, very softly, and pour with the ice floating on top. No, just kidding, just kidding. And, uh, so we wanted to have uh, this uh, combination of uh, Fanciulli, but also the good fell a little bit the movie, because as inspiration, we went to see the movie in the cinema to create more uh, team bonding, more than anything else. And uh, the way how we interpret the recipe is, uh, well, bourbon infused with uh, cardamom leaves. Yeah, leaves. Yeah, pass it around maybe, so those ones that are not which I love them because they're very fragrant, they have a lot of herbaceousness. But what we want as well is the texture, almost like tarragon. No? Mm -hmm. Tarragon is uh, sweet and dry, right? It's very particular flavor, but I love it. So we do uh, infusion. Central the flavor and we can buy big batches of leaves and store it for longer. I will leave it at 24 hours. There is no rocket science here. We tried uh, um, sous vide, we tried uh, with a lot of apple, we tried ultrasound, we tried all of them. But the final results, it wasn't the same as uh, like mama used to make infusion. Simple as that, because of the texture that we couldn't achieve. Then we have a blend of uh, uh, sweet vermouth mixed with uh, Black cardamom syrup, so the same black cardamom that used in the bit, we, we make a syrup. And uh, balsamic vinegar, which give a little bit of this uh, acidity and sweetness that elevate the, the freshness of the cocktail. And uh, bitters. Okay. Yeah, at least. That's what you were doing already. You're always fascinated to listen. About <laughs> so we use again a conobara glass, this is a wine glass. With the pattern of the corner bar, we have a line is the martini glass, which is the most popular for obvious reason. We have a uh, white wine, red wine, champagne coupe, which we had by Brock, so we cannot show. Uh, highball and uh, champagne flute. So again, once you have all the drinks, beverages, and cocktail in front of you at the table, so it's way you connect with other aspect of the bar. Also, it's a merchandise, so we sell them quite well, actually. So the drink itself, I uh, hope you like it, as uh, this uh, generous uh, viscosity and uh, sweetness and freshness. But there are other aspects that we like to play when we create a drink. You know, when you create a cocktail, as inside the balsamic vinegar and uh, black cardamom, yeah, you smell it. Uh, yeah, it smells smoky, it smells uh, acidic. And then you taste it, and you taste what you smell. It'd be boring, no? It's too obvious. So we like to disrupt a little bit. And we use this uh, essential oil. Today we use elicriso, which is a, a flower that only grows in Tuscany and Sardinia. As the aroma almost like uh, blossom, orange blossom, honey, so sweet and floral. And what we do, we spray on top. It's a 30 PS spray. That's why the cocktail costs a lot with three spray. And what's happening is essential oil is uh, diluted with the uh, alcohol. So it's not pure essential oil. The routine in alcohol in a perfect balance that the aromas, they sit on top of the drink. So you don't feel the drink at all. You only feel elicrizo in this case. So you smell 
flora, you smell uh, honey. But then you taste the cocktail and the aroma only stay on the nose and the palate has uh, its own experience. So you have two sensation in one, which we found out is very pleasant and, uh, and the guests like it. So this uh, can give you the contact. Podere Santa Bianca is a friend of mine. He's based in Tuscany. He was uh, one of the three most famous um, uh, publicity photographer in the world in the 80s. And then uh, he wanted to change life. He started to, he bought a, a land in Tuscany with agritourism and start to do um, to, to, to plant botanicals, so to distill them, and also a supplier from all over the world. You see this uh, glass here, as in the photo, as a little uh, belt. The belt is made with the same leather of the sofa where you sit. So sometimes you go into a bar and you look already, you know, you look at what's happening on the table, the color of the cocktail, you look at the smile of the staff, and uh, you look if there are mirrors and everything. But sometimes you don't notice uh, where your ass is, literally. So where you're sitting. And again, it's a connection of uh, bringing you back into a more uh, boldness of the corner bar experience. And the cherry, we wanted to have a different way. You know, we're classic with a twist. Cherry is a cherry. Cherry in a cocktail, right? But we wanted to have a different way how to, how to serve it. So we create a positive this belt with this little metal uh, uh, sword, metal pick. And we just let the cherry hang. So already create a little bit of curiosity when you place the drink there. Okay, go back to the mentality. The drink doesn't need to be explained many times. can be looking amazing, tasting delicious, according to taste, of course. And then uh, maybe this experience will ignite some curiosity. You want to ask questions. Why is made like that? Where the inspiration is coming from? So every time we have uh, the storytelling, which is very, very important, of the inspiration of the drink, even more than uh, how the drink has been uh, made and conceived. And adding something, for us, this drink in particular is really, really important to us because in our menu we've got four sections, three that change every year and one which stay with us since the opening, which is the masterpieces. And in the masterpieces selection, you will find the drinks that really are the pillar of the bar. So this drink has been with us almost 10 years. Eight years, yeah. And it's the only section in the menu that if you come at any time, anywhere, um, anytime like this year, and you come in two years, this drink will be there because it's really embracing the vision of the bar. So it's really important. It's really one of our best drink in the menu. And for this one, we create a different cocktail card, which uh, we ran out and they didn't arrive. So you explain it by words. It's a cocktail card that, yes, with the recipe of the drink as, uh, as, uh, as the classic. Also, is a, as a folder, is a, is a, a folder, a foldable folder. They contain also an edible photo of uh, the bartenders making your drink. So it's not only edible, but also as the photo of it. And uh, we spray the same uh, elixir or essential oil that is on top of the cocktail. So when you find it, you don't only see the recipe you remember, but you also can look at it and really be transported again into the table. But also you can smell it, or you can eat it as well. It's a rice paper, like when you go to church on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit like the priest. Should we go to the next? Yeah, let's do that. Do we need to spray anything yes. here? Fantastic. May I like spray? Please. <laughs> <laughs> I see it was, uh, it was, uh, I couldn't stay still. So the, the selection of cocktails that we, we um, sharing today, they are, um, they have all different aspects of, uh, of, uh, font of inspiration. The martini was the classic, so we inspired by the classic. Good fellas, uh, team, uh, team spirit. Everybody give contribution. And then we have uh, Sweet and Z, two of our favorite regular guests. So we started by our guest. Mr. Sweet is uh, the English name for uh, Dolce, it's his name. And Mr. Z, 
I cannot share the name. He's a very important person. They know each other since very long time. And uh, Mr. Sweet now lives in London. He travels the world. He's the vice president for a huge uh, um, cinema company. And he likes the good life. You know, he always first class, uh, best hotel, safari, champagne. He likes uh, martinis. He likes like, um, navy strength gin. He loves uh, tequila, mezcal. Grazie. So he's a kind of, you know, what is this, a harsh guy? Every time he comes to us, there are at least five drinks in his bill in one hour. Mr. Z lives in Milan. He's very quiet. I think he still lives with the family. They're all, uh, you know, 40, 50. And when he comes to London, you know, he's always very, very educated, Shall polite. Uh, he stays at the bar. He like a cocktail more like pina colada, grasshopper, golden Cadillac. So they really reflect their personality. Mr. Sweet is uh, full on and Mr. Z is uh, tranquilo. Actually, they tease each other a lot because they are the opposite. The opposite, but as well, they, they are Condor. the best friends. And they meet every time in the corner bar. So we want to honor all this uh, dynamic uh, of, uh, of emotion between, between them and us. And we create a cocktail which brings those two personalities together. It's uh, a tequila Negroni. <laughs> and uh, a, golden a golden Cadillac to have a creamy cocktail together with a boozy cocktail which is an interesting part of one of our developing process because as the philosophy of this is really remarkable for us because the bar right. for us is made by people so I think today we are all doing a symphony of flavor together we are all a cocktail that's why we wanted to create a cocktail based on people. But how, how would you mix a cream with a Negroni? So that's why uh, this is an example of the milk punch uh, using that we do at the bar. But we don't use milk punch to clarify a liquid. We use a milk punch to connect two drinks. So it's really remarkable for us. And so what we do technically, we create a Negroni with the tequila reposado, and we create this cocoa husk cream with some bergamot oil. You know cocoa husk is the, the skin of the cocoa beans. So cocoa beans, they are, uh, they are bitter as well. Cocoa husk actually is very aromatic. And uh, you can try as well. It has the, the same molecules as the caffeine, as the cocoa beans. So you can drink it as a tea. As a tea. You make infusion with a hot water. And the smell, the smell is like hot chocolate, but like hot chocolate made with milk. Actually, it's not. And when you drink it as well, the texture and the aromas, they are so, I know, they have a placebo effect almost, like if you would drink hot chocolate. Very cool. Just took personal things. Just to try. <laughs> and we do this cream uh, combining the single cream, cocoa husk, and some bergamot oil. Once we've got the cream and we mix it together with the Negroni, we leave it to rest around 20 minutes, and then we add uh, around 20 ml of the lemon juice. So the lemon juice acts with the single cream, split the fat, and we've got this lovely silkiness uh, texture for the drink, but actually you, you don't have any milky factor in it. So it's really, really lovely as a drink. It's not for vegan, so sorry if there is any vegan here. I see many vegan friends eating McDonald's at 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Por favor. And, uh, perfect. So the drink is uh, served in uh, the Connaught uh, Champagne Coop, as you see in the photo. But today, because we like to blend with the uh, local, we use uh, Bar Ambassador Coop. <laughs> And we serve it as a premix. So we've got premix brie batch in a bottle, and this help us to speed the service. So we just pour around 120 ml in one glass. They contain dilution already. So allow the, even the flavor to rest for longer and to mellow it together. Yes, because it contains some milk. So you, if you take it out from the fridge, it started to fermentate. 
you can create another copy. <laughs> but this is not only milk punch as well, as a double infusion at 30,000 feet at minus 10 degrees, because we put in the storage of the plane. <laughs> There's a different layer of flavor. <laughs> this spoke for you. The spray on top of this one is uh, one of my favorite is uh, basil and uh, pink grapefruits. You feel, uh, I give you for granted, I didn't ask, sorry. Did you feel uh, before and, and now as well the, the aroma and the flavor, they are two different things? So there are simple elements that you can use uh, with nonchalance, without, you know, without pumping out too much, that uh, can be disruptive and uh, they, they create a tension. Any question, ragazzi? Which one did you like the most so far? You don't no know one is fine. Guys. I love it. <laughs> it's fine. Huh? You need to take a photo, do I? You need to take a photo of the drinks, the full drink? Okay. I tease you and now I, I take it away from you. I sensed it. Uh, <laughs> uh, what do you want it? Maybe there? The next uh, drink. Ah, we didn't mention the bergamot oil. Anyway, we'll explain now. No, it will be in the setting stone, so the liquid. Ah, okay. See? There's no spray here, Paul? No. No? Okay, ragazzi. Uh, setting stone. Like a little bit like uh, the conno bar mentality now is a uh, setting stone. He lost uh, the taste of time and uh, made uh, its own rules for our uh, friends. Yeah, wait a little bit. Let me start with the romantic side first. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Luca. We say inspiration is all around us. We need to find inspiration everywhere. And also, we always like to show off a little bit that we've been, uh, I don't know, in Singapore in the most... Uh, Luxurious hotel in Singapore with amazing view, with a fake cascade in the room, and so on and so forth. As well as we like to share that we were in uh, Oaxaca, where uh, my Spanish is very fluent, but they didn't speak in Spanish. They only spoke the native language. So as much as their story nice to share, sometimes people don't want to listen to our story. So we need to take elements, which are everywhere, and translate into, into this one. So we always... Uh, squeezing our brain where to find the next inspiration so we always try to go everywhere people think look in the sky in london the sky is very gray so we don't find inspiration there for sure or think outside the box and we don't need the box you need to put limits you know we don't need a box sometimes the inspiration is literally you know below your feet have a look okay. below our feet since 13 years, there is uh, the beautiful marble. There's also is the catwalk that we saw in the beginning. So he said, why we don't create a cocktail inspired by marble? No? Simple, right? This Italian marble, by the way, from Massa Carrara, which is very famous and very expensive. Is that this piece of marble that... Uh, so this cocktail was created uh, three, three years. menus ago? Yeah. Three years ago? Three years ago. It's fucking cool, guys. I love it. So we, we propose it again. <laughs> we propose it again in uh, in the next menu that we launch the 16th or 17th of February. Depends if I go to Cyprus or not. Um, simple uh, combination of uh, kind of uh, kind of martini, style. martini, clear martini sort of things. Gin, Geneva, sherry. We use uh, also uh, Italicus to give this uh, sweetness and aromatics. Uh, so the marble uh, is not, is, this is not a coaster. Eh? Oops. This is not a coaster. Um, it's uh, part of the preparation. It's the flavor of the drink. So we take the mix of the first uh, one, two, three, four, five ingredients with the liquid oil. The same liquid oil that we use as a spray, now we put into the drink. So it's another way how to use essential oil that we'll share, share in a moment. So we take a bag, yeah. honestly uh, stolen so, from the kitchen, because the they're very expensive. You put a mix inside, 
And before you close the bag, you put the marble inside. Now you see the bag, sous vide for how long? One hour? One hour, around 60, 60 degrees. The classic uh, perfect combination. 60 degrees for one hour. You can <laughs> you almost put it. <laughs> Just, <laughs> if you are not sure, you start with that one, then you, you start you take, to balance. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, somehow. <laughs> I saw you take out your drink that, uh, I mean, you want to taste marble? You want to taste it? Huh? Maybe you're tasting the drink, it's easier, no? But the drink really tastes marble. It kind of, I don't know how to say, minerality. Uh, we all put some stone when we were kids in the mouth. So you had the feeling, the texture as well, like uh, dusty, rubid texture that can translate into the cocktail. So again, if you explain it as we did now, you look for it. But if you don't explain it, maybe there is this sensation you cannot describe it. They make you curious. Shall we go? And so we, the concept was also to call back the winery industry to when they store the wine, for example, in clay. So we use this stone to give some minerality and a touch of saltiness to the drink. Uh, ah, this is for the and then there is the garnish. No, garnish always uh, needs a uh, garnish. Uh, well, most of the time is a part of the drink because it's edible, it's part of the flavor, but sometimes it's just a decoration. If it's a cool decoration, why not? So we have. Uh, Paul, where do you put the 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 peppers here? So we found we say okay, it's a nice cocktail, it's a nice concept, but how can we make it even more, uh, you know, cool? Sometimes you find a connection without asking for it. And we found the stone paper. There's a notebook made with paper created by the byproduct of a cutting stone, right? So it's a stone dust combined with, uh, um, how you say, a densanti. Uh, like glue, imagine some glue. So the dust together with the um, glue allow the mix to be a paper. So they actually lay down all the dust with the glue and uh, start to become a paper. And this is really um, famous in the hospitality industry because it's really done for people who are like with dirty hands to allow to write down without any issue. What are you guys doing to the bicycle? <laughs> so it's a, it's a book made for chefs and bartenders. Because, you know, sometimes you're taking notebook, uh, you're taking notes, especially if you're cooking, you can drop something or uh, you ruin the paper, you ruin the recipe, you almost ruin the memory. Well, uh, we wanted to use a piece of this one to guard this as a cocktail. So we can even write uh, messages on the paper for our guests. No telephone number, don't worry, guys. Okay. <laughs> they can find us on social media. <laughs> and as as well as we did, uh, we did before with the trolley, talking about the human interaction, the stone paper allow us in special occasion to go an extra mile. Because, for example, when we um, pour the drink and there is, we notice that we did, there is some celebration of birthday, anniversary, it gives us the opportunity to write a message also on the paper and to stay on the drinks until they finish. So, of course, uh, the message needs to be, uh, because the ink is not edible, the message needs to be written uh, where uh, the paper where is not in contact with the liquid. But not because otherwise it's going to melt. I'll show you now. We wrote a message here. I feel like... Uh, magician. Magician. <laughs> so the message is here. You saw it. Eh? I wrote the message. This is uh, water. You know, it's real water. You put the paper into the water. Can you check the paper is there? The paper is Fantastic. there. Fantastic. <laughs> Dirk, you want to take it out? Can you open it and uh, read the message? Zurich, grazie mille. 
Okay. Can you try to dry the message to see if it deletes? Take a close. So today, memory of our experience with you in Zurich and with the bar ambassador is set in stone in our memories. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Grazie mille. Usually they do an applause after the sentence, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Well, the look is, uh, not good. I like the text of the, the paper. So the drink is uh, uh, thrown today. So uh, essential oil. The liquid essential oil here is, uh, is called Assoluta, which means it's a pure essential oil, super concentrated. Uh, when essential oil are super concentrated, they are, they are pure. You cannot use them on the skin because uh, you can uh, uh, burn the skin. Usually they use, like in massage, they dilute with uh, uh, some fattiness. It can be coconut oil or aloe vera, this kind of stuff. We use uh, one drop per liter of uh, the setting stone. So when we do the premix, we must compare one, one drop per liter. And you give this flavor to it. So you can also flavor uh, spirits or syrup, anything you like, with some uh, aromas which are not very much accessible but you can uh, translate them in, uh, into a clean form. So it can be bergamot, which is very expensive. If you want to buy the bergamot, you need to dry them, but you cannot cook it and blah, 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 blah. You buy bergamot oil, you put one drop in one liter of whatever it is, and uh, here you got it. So there are different ways how to use essential oil in a very effective way. The spray and uh, into the drink. Just looking for the book. Uh, uh, <laughs> Any question? No? Again, last uh, life lesson of the corner bar is uh, translating to my signature sentence, which is uh, straight up with style and don't forget the smile. So you translate into the cocktail. No, always need to be a cocktail, needs to be elegant, good looking, and need to translate happiness as well as we need to be in life. You know, always to be proud of yourself, be straight with a genuine smile. Sometimes even when uh, things don't go well, you keep smiling and uh, things will turn around in your favor. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to be here with you. Uh, thank you for your time, for uh, listening. Thank you, dear Vera, so Luca, Thank Vanessa you. for yesterday, grazie mille, Paulino, uh, Benjamin is downstairs, do I miss anyone? Mark in the back. Uh, thank you, Zurich. Any question? We are here. See Otherwise. you tonight. <laughs> and that's it. That's what we do at Econobar. Perfect. So. Grazie. Thank you very much, Ago. Thank you, Paolo. For, thank you. Uh, this inspiration. It's nice to uh, listen to people who have uh, so much passion, so much love for uh, for our thing that we do every day. Um, I know there's a lot of passion here in this room as well. I know most of you. I've most visited most of you. Um, and um, yeah, let's keep this uh, this passion and, and this passion for hospitality for marketing up. As you all know, I am very Big uh, thoughts about Zurich and Barcin and Tucson in general, Barcin. So, again, Aldo, thank you very much for sharing you. all your um, secrets with us. Um, thanks again to Diageo for for helping us uh, to bring Aldo and Paolo to Zurich. And I really, really, really like Zurich. I was here five years ago the first time when we met. Yeah. And I'm very glad to be back. So, any of you want us back, feel free to call, <laughs> okay? <laughs> yeah, for me, it's a good excuse yeah. to come back here, right? Does anybody have some questions? I'm sure you have. Now is the time. Yeah, it was so simple. Everything was so simple. Yeah. So everything was clear. Yes. Thomas? How is the reservation policy in Connaught? Because Connaught is also a hotel. Mm -hmm. I'm also a hotel. And it's often a little bit difficult with the hotel guests. So how is your reservation policy? 
you smile all the time. <laughs> uh, so, okay, we don't take reservation officially for the bar. Uh, yeah, exactly, unless our uh, regular guest, uh, VIP. But we do prioritize uh, residents of the hotel because they spend uh, 2,000 pounds a night and, you know. But also, it became the Connell Bar, it became a destination as uh, you would take the flight and go somewhere for, uh, I don't know, go to Copenhagen to go to Noma. You spend the night there. And as well, we have a Helen da Rose at the hotel, which is now Three Star Michelin. So there are people, guests, they really stay at the Connaught Hotel because they know they can have access to the restaurant, to the bar. So it's, uh, it's quite cool. We are, uh, we are an upselling tool for, uh, for the company. Yeah, but sometimes it's tricky. Eh? Like the other day, bar was full. All the table that we keep free for residents, they were taken. The regular show up and uh, ta -ta 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 you you find a way to to make it happen, you know. Also, if the bar is full, it's full. You, you know, if you're always genuine with them, they understand and uh, they might not wait to they might not care to wait at the bar a little bit with a glass of champagne. Also, but, we have the champagne yeah. room available. Yes, what help us is like that we have a an extension of the bar called Champagne Room, which allow us to bring the overflow of the bar in there just to start with, and then we will move them to the bar. So it really help us, but it's never enough. <laughs> yeah, luckily there is uh, also we open in, uh, we have a Kabul bar, which is the classic bar, like a classic uh, hotel bar, you know, big armchair uh, where you go for breakfast, lunch, in the afternoon. And then the evening become more a spirits bar and classic cocktail. Then the corner bar, which is the say the innovative uh, part of it, Champagne Room is a kind of hybrid. And we open a red room, which is another 60 seat bar, which is connected to the Champagne Room, is a wine concept. So it depends on your needs or your guest needs, you can really go in one of the three places. Even though we open the third bar, we still have the queue. For about 30 people all the time, waiting for at least one hour to get into the corner bar. Before opening the red room, we were turning away like 50, 100 people a day. And Paddy said, well, there is business we are turning away. So we bought the building next door, and we opened a patisserie, a bar, and we're opening a cigar lounge. So during pandemic, when all the world stopped, we did a restoration of the sofa of the corner hotel, the corner bar. We did the, the complete restoration in the Helen da Rose. We did the lobby, concierge desk, reception desk. We opened the patisserie, we built the red room, and we start to build the, the cigar lounge. Few few projects. Was, uh, yeah. Where, um, if you are the kind of person that get bored and uh, get stuck into the comfort zone, the corner is not for you. Or, or wake you or break you. There's, uh, there's, no middle, there's no middle way, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Independent management, independent team. Because we want uh, the product as well. So the list of uh, spirits and cocktails are different. Well, some of them, of course, are, are matching. Because we want to have a completely different identity. I, I don't like when I go to hotel with the different bars and you see almost the same, the same things around. It's, uh, it doesn't give any different experience to the guest. So different management, different team, because we wanted to really feel the product uh, where they work and where they can give contribution. So what is the headcount at the moment? Uh, 16. 15, 16. We open uh, six days. Uh, so Sunday is closed because we go to church. Right? And uh, we open in the afternoon only. We mainly have two shifts, one for prepping and set up in the bar starts in six in the morning and finish around four which is one guy <laughs> but it's not only it's not only premix for the bar also you need to fold them you need to find the napkins <laughs> count them make sure that nobody stole it from the other department you need to fold them uh you need to clear the silverware you know there's also many things that uh that takes time go to ozzy who is the um, the the guy that received the goods delivery and things they're supposed to go for us, they go to the fine dining restaurant. So you need to, you know, 
Jago make things happen. Like, sometimes they call us eight o'clock in the morning crying, especially the new one. How can you do it? <laughs> yeah, I cannot find this and that. Die, die. Yeah, you find a way. <laughs> Just make sure the bar is ready for o'clock, otherwise uh, you will pay for it. <laughs> yeah, it's quite funny. Yes. Good fellas. Yes. So it was the um, uh, testing of the good fellas. And the cherry that we use, uh, there is only one. It's a bourbon infused cherry. How we make it? We buy the jar. We open the jar. <laughs> We take it out. Is uh, was the brand American, uh, the, the... which are very nice actually. They're very meaty and juicy. They are not sweet. They are Maybe not juicy. To... Should be some. No, Maybe sometimes there are other people that make amazing products, and why don't use them? Rather than always no, try to complicate our life and make something yeah. that perhaps end up to be something gimmicky and you not know, good tasting. Uh, ruby cherry, something like that. Anyway. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Split. Oh, we just a small amount, around twenty ml, for a batch of a liter and a half, because it's just the reaction the lemon does. It's just the acidity. No, 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 no. no. You can use other uh, citrus as well. You can use uh, well other juices. Passion fruit. Passion fruit always really nice. works. Vinegar. So add a little bit of nuances of uh, flavor, or cut the sweetness in different way. Yeah. But it's really the reaction, the the acid as go with the milk, that really help us to deliver the prep that we want to do. It's not really the lemon flavor that we have. Uh, what's your next goal? <laughs> I like Zori, but I like Zori very much. I don't know if I want to move or maybe go up and down. I don't know. Maybe we'll open a bar together next project. Let's see. We'll call them all secrets. Well, you have an offer? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't be shy. <laughs> what, what about your goal? The goals uh, for the bar for us is uh, keep the trajectory of uh, of uh, keep on growing. Always try to make sure that the team they come on board they they give you a more and more contribution because we want the Econo bar to be really something that uh, it can last for a long time. I mean, it's, it's clear it's not like a short project that goes up, you win the awards and then uh, it goes down. We always keep the focus on our guests, which is the, the most difficult thing to do. Because there are so many new concepts coming up that uh, can be, uh, they're very interesting. But you need to realize, did you hear my neck? <laughs> you need to realize uh, which is the, the one that is suitable for you as a, as a style, and suitable for uh, your bar or the bar where you work. So keeping as down concentrated in your vision is the most difficult thing to do. Rather than picking cherries from everywhere, I try to make uh, something to impress the guests. We just signed uh, for the book the other day, finally, after uh, six months of negotiation. Uh, so in a couple of years will be the Conobar book coming up, which is a dream that I have since a uh, long time. And uh, yeah, what else, Paulino? I think uh, our main goal every year that, that we propose to ourselves to really let the team embracing the philosophy because it's like a winning, a, a winning lottery ticket for us. When you have someone from the team that really trusts and believes in the philosophy that your bar has, it, it's really easy you know, then to reach whatever goal you need, whatever goal you like. So, yeah. I really like, I really love the Connaught Bar was the purpose why I moved from Italy because I watched a video of the Connaught Bar. So I said, okay, let's try to work there. And uh, so it's really, uh, my, it's my second home. Really be, be embracing even more the philosophy of the bar and the hotel itself. 
We are looking for barbecues. <laughs> <laughs> and hostess. <laughs> What's the price of a Maxi? Starting 24 pounds plus a savvy charge. It goes up to 50 pounds, which is with a condo bargain that uh, we produce ourselves. We created for the 10th anniversary of the condo bar. It's a spirit that really embraces uh, the spirit in terms of distillates and solo the condo bar. Is uh, distilling a rot of vapor? So it's quite a small batch. And when the people say small batch and crafty gin, they come to me, say, okay, who is making for you? Hey, this distiller, the distiller. Ah, this is a small batch. Come here, I'll show you what is small batch and crafty. <laughs> we do the distillation, we do the dilution, we do the bottling, we wash every single bottle, we do the bottling, we put the label, we put the, the shrink up, the clear film, and with the hair dryer, we close every single bottle. <laughs> We launched in 2018, it was a thousand bottle only number, which finished in about six months. The one to 100 are kept in on the side and we released them in December in a special case, which is inspired by the arches of the Conno Bar, the, the black one that were here. But we still produce the no numbered bottle. So there's always uh, something that we find that is connected to, to the essence of the Conno Bar but brings to life different aspects as well. And also lo lockdown for us was a, a moment of production because from since lockdown we launched for the first time our bottled cocktail. So you will find the two most iconic drinks, Char de Martini and the Negroni, bottled already with two serve. So it really was a, a moment where we didn't stop, but we fit, we recreate ourselves. Yeah, we wanted to have our guests to feel uh, the love, even though they were at home. So that with simple touches, we could still uh, send them part of uh, the corner bar. What's the price of one of these bottles? 37. 30, yeah. oh. Two, uh, two Which drinks. contain two portions. Oh. Diluted already. Oh. So to put in the freezer 10, 15 minutes before use, and they're ready to, to pour. The martini is flavored with uh, ginseng and bergamot, as you added. And the Negroni is flavored with uh, orange leaf essential oil, which is absolutely outstanding. Usually I have it, but not today. Any more questions? I think we're done. <laughs> Three, two, one. Perfect. Grazie mille. <laughs> Thank you very much. My pleasure. My pleasure. Perfect. So, uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for this comment. Um, wir halten euch auf dem Laufenden, wenn es wieder uh, noch mal ein uh, Guest for one night, wie es so heißt in dieser Reihe. Uh, um, machen und wir werden jetzt versuchen, all Monat bis all zwei Monate werden wir versuchen, jemanden reinzuholen. Ich werde natürlich sprechen mit ein paar Talkshows. Also, ich werde auf unserem Insta-Kanal äh, machen. Wir werden es dann ausgetragen. Ähm, natürlich, wenn ihr heute noch auf sozialen Medien all die Fotos postet, macht das bitte. Vergesst nicht, Argo zu taggen. Paolo Scalpi, Scalpi ist auch äh, auf ähm, Insta und The Connet Bar natürlich, oder Connet. Äh, warm Wasser nicht vergessen, bitte. Äh, <lacht> und ähm, ja, danke mir, dass ihr alle gekommen habt. Ja, wir äh, äh, werden jetzt schnell wieder zu, alles zurück äh, zum normalen Bar-Setup machen. Also seid uns nicht böse, wenn es jetzt gleich keine Drinks gibt. Das wieder umbauen. Ein äh, paar euch haben wir heute am Tisch reserviert, so viel ich weiß. Ähm, falls ihr keinen Tisch reserviert habt und heute doch noch kommen möchtet, äh, ich kann euch nichts versprechen, aber ich würde so zwischen Viertel nach neun, halb zehn mal auftauchen, weil wir haben nur ein Seating angenommen und es gibt ein Set Menu und drei Drinks und äh, ich denke nach drei, drei Drinks ist man äh, Zanzan. Zanzan. <lacht> dann werden die, Leute, die ersten Leute dann wieder aufstehen und gehen und dann werden wieder Tische frei. Das seid nicht böse, wenn äh, es kein Platz gibt. Perfekt. Super. Ähm, ja, wie viel war es das von uns?
Ich würde jetzt gerne noch Fotos machen, ein paar Minuten und dann. Ich mache ein bisschen etwas. Hey, was? Ich habe Mr. Fast from Newspaper. I'm sure you understand. Fantastisch. Ich gebe ihm eine Karte. Okay, danke dir mal. Grazie, ragazzi. Grazie, tutto bene? Sì, andava. Eh, non vedrei che vengono a morire. Eh, 